I have been a social media manager and I have hired social media managers. So if you're not sure what to look for when hiring one, that's what today's video is all about. First, let's get into the qualities that make up the best social media manager out there. Cause if you're going to hire for one, you want the best, right? Then we'll talk in detail about the hiring process, including the two assessments that I give every single potential hire on my team. That is so important to make sure that you're getting the right person. And then we'll talk about the differences and deciding whether you need a full-time member or if you just need project work. Speaking from experience here, like I said, I have been a social media manager and I have hired social media managers. When I first started my business back in 2016, I was a dental hygienist doing some social media client work on the side. And from there, I have scaled my business to seven figures. I have a social media and video marketing agency where I've hired social media managers and I have also had a ton of experience as one. So I know exactly what I'm looking for that I think might be really helpful to you in hiring a social media manager. For me, when I'm hiring a social media manager, first of all, I want someone that is a good writer. They're gonna be creating content for me on all these social media platforms. And being a good writer, of course, includes all the technical stuff and you know, good grammar and punctuation, but also the right messaging and being able to, to write in my voice or whatever the voice is that I'm asking them to write in. And this can be a really challenging thing to accomplish. I've had some social media managers that just nailed it and did it so well. Some social media managers that needed a little bit of practice and nurturing and coaching, which is totally fine. And some that just unfortunately miss the mark and maybe would be a great social media manager for a different business. But knowing what you need for your business and if the messaging is really specific and you need someone to perfectly align with that, that's one of the most important things that I look for that I would recommend that you look for and you include in your assessments, which I'll talk about in a minute. I also want my social media manager to be well-versed in multiple channels or willing to learn them. And you know, with social media platforms changing and evolving all the time, they have to be also adaptable. You know, recently Clubhouse is a new app that, that hit the market and my social media manager was very quick to go, here's what we need to do on Clubhouse now. Here's what you can do. Here's what we can change to our strategy. Here's how we can use Clubhouse to drive towards different platforms, to drive towards sales. And I really appreciate that about the adaptability with new platforms and even platform changes. Some of the platforms that you might be using all the time can be changing. Facebook, the algorithm can change. Instagram updates and has new functionality like reels or searching by keywords instead of hashtags. And the person that is managing your social media needs to be on top of that. So making sure that they're on top of it when they come in and they're also able to adapt as things change. When I'm hiring a social media manager, I also want to see that they themselves have a strong social media presence, whether it's from their current social media for, for their own personal accounts, or if they can show me where they've come from for other companies that they might've managed before. I want to be able to get a feel for that personality or for that brand and see, do they do a good job of representing themselves or the companies that they came from? I want to see examples of their work. I also want them to be data driven, that they understand the analytics. They know the goals that we're trying to reach. It's not just creating content for the sake of content. It's not just for creating, you know, pretty attractive stuff. It's also about creating engagement, creating an ROI, knowing the metrics that are leading towards lead generation and lead nurture and lead conversion. If you don't have that, you're just publishing your face off and throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Of course, we wanna be able to test, but we also wanna make decisions based on data. Now, I mentioned that with their writing skills, that's gonna be super important for aligning with the brand messaging and the voice, but it's also the rest of the activities. Maybe it's the graphic design, maybe it's how they respond to comments. You wanna make sure that they're using the language that aligns with your messaging. You know, for example, if Disney put out a piece of content that was like, violent, you know, that completely goes against what you would imagine would be their, their branding and their messaging. It could be really damaging if someone that is controlling what may be the first impression and the continuous nurturing for your audience, you want to make sure that they're putting their best foot forward and holding your brand to high standards. And lastly, I want that person to be creative. I want them to come to the table with ideas for them to be adaptable to how things are changing and to make suggestions for what we can be doing for our content, for different campaigns, for how we show up up for how we respond and engage with our audience. So I want to see that they're taking initiative in that creativity and looking for opportunities to explore and test different types of content. So from that, from everything that I shared, what do you think is the most important quality on that list? Let me know in the comments below, or if there's something that I missed that is a really important quality to you, I'd also love for you to share that below. Now let me share with you my hiring process, which might be seen as a little intensive, but listen, I'm all about hiring slow and firing fast. If it doesn't work out, I don't want to waste time trying to make things work. This is my 
my business. I only get one shot. I want to make sure that I am putting my best foot forward, that I'm getting the right people on this team, that I am creating the best company culture, that I as a leader am bringing the best people together on my team. So the hiring process is probably the most important to bring that together. Here's part of our hiring process. You can choose to take all of this or pieces of it. Maybe there's, there's part of your hiring process that's working really well for you and there's some things that you can consider here. So first of all, we of course put out our job description. We put it on indeed.com or maybe Upwork or online jobs or wherever we believe that the best candidates for the work we need will be looking for a job. And we make that job description really clear. We put a clear description of the role, the requirements, the results that we expect so that they know, you know, at the end of that 90 day probation period, here's what we expect that you'll be doing. And we have a, a very clear onboarding process too, that when we're working with these new employees, that we give them all the tools, all the skills, all the nurturing that they need to be really successful in their role. So that by the end of that 90 day probation, they totally have every opportunity to be successful and take initiative and grow in their role. Instead of in that job description, just asking them to send their resume, we actually include a questionnaire form. And in the questionnaire form, we allow them to upload their resume, but the resume hasn't been the most important part. It is very important, of course, because we want to see the companies that they've come from, the experience they have, how long they were at those companies. You know, if we look at a resume and we see people have been jumping around and never stick at a job for more than a couple months, that might raise some red flags for us. So we certainly want to see their resume, but we also on that questionnaire, we ask them some questions that would be typical first interview type questions so we can get them right then and there. We ask them about their previous experience. We ask them why they're interested in this job, why they might be leaving a previous job. We ask them what they know about the company. Now, now that has been a really interesting question to ask because sometimes we get some really awesome answers that show that this person has done their research, that they really want to be part of their company. And it gives us the idea that maybe they'd be a really great fit for our company culture. Now we've also gotten some answers to that question where we can tell that they don't even know who we are at all. They're less likely to move on to the next round of the interview process. Cause I want to hire people that are true believers. I want to hire people that are so excited to work for our company, not someone that's just like blasting their resume to any job posting. We've also gotten some entertaining answers answers that had nothing to do with our company. So gave us a laugh, but also showed us they have no idea what we do. We want to work with someone that's really excited about working with us. So after we review their questionnaire, we make sure that their answers align with our values and our company culture. We look at their resume to make sure there's no red flags and maybe we're impressed with some of their previous experience. Then we'll ask them to get on a quick zoom call with us so we can meet them face to face. Now at this point, it might not be me getting on the call with everyone, especially because we are hiring so frequently. I let my HR department take care of that. And sometimes I don't even come into the interview until it's the final round. Or if it's a role that I don't directly oversee, it might not be me as the second interviewer on that. It might be someone else that manages that department. So on that Zoom call, we get to meet them face to face, see how their communication is, make sure that you know we align in our communication. We've had some people that get on those calls and although they did really well in answering the questionnaire, when we got to them face to face, the communication was a little staggered, or maybe they had a hard time keeping eye contact or, you know, just, it didn't align with what we were looking for in communication styles. So in that case, we would thank them and move on to the next candidates. If in this interview, it goes really well, we'll ask them to do a test assignment. And usually we want this test assignment to be something that would take them like maybe 15 minutes, not something that's asking too much or taking too much time, but something that just gives us a sample of the work that they can do. This will give us a really good idea of if they were to be executed this role regularly, would we like this quality of work? Now this also tests if they can follow instructions and if they can follow deadlines. This has been a place where people fall off too, because sometimes people just won't respond with their test or assignment and they, they miss the deadline completely. Or there's some people who don't follow instructions and all. And that shows us, you know, if they were to become part of our team, then it wouldn't be a good fit. And there's been some people who've been upset by us asking for a test assignment. And you know, we say that's totally fine. This is gonna show us your skills and your expertise. We're not trying to exploit you for any work here, but I think it's fair for us to ask of this. And if, if you don't wanna do that, if you don't wanna be a team player and, and show us what you got, then that's fine. Then you're just not right for the role. You know, one time we actually had someone that came back to us very angry saying, you're trying to exploit me for free work. This would take me six hours to complete. And 
we said, you know what, that's totally fine. We don't want you to do the test assignment because this is something that would take our current, you know, whatever person in that role, maybe 15 minutes. And if it's going to take you six hours, then that lets us know you're not right for this role. Thanks so much for your time. Now, if they respond with that test assignment and the quality of work is great, they've stuck to the deadline, they've followed instructions, then we'll bring them on for the second interview where they'll meet with the first person they met with and someone else that might be directly overseeing them to ask them more questions, just get to know them better, maybe talk to them about the test assignment, see what they loved, maybe see what they thought they would like to do differently next time, talk about, you know, the financial part of things if we haven't discussed it at that point. And then if that goes well, we bring them to a second test assignment. And this is one that we want to take a little bit longer and we pay them for it. We want to give them an assignment that is a direct reflection of their role and see how well they do with that. And we've also had some people that unfortunately flunked out at that point that weren't a good fit and some that showed us that we had multiple great candidates at this place and it's the best position you can be in if you have a hard time choosing between your final candidates that way you know that you're going to get a really great quality candidate to join your team now before we get into the difference and how to know if you need someone full-time or just for project work make sure that you subscribe to this channel i'm providing videos like this every single week to help you grow and scale your business to six and seven figures now for me sometimes i only need people who are just on for a project or just part time little project work, or sometimes there's enough work that I know that it's going to be full time. The way that I typically decide this is by myself or other employees who are in charge of these departments doing a time study. And what that means is we write down everything that we do all throughout the day. We actually have this chart that's like these 15 minute little blocks, time blocks, where we write down everything we did every 15 minutes. So that by the end of maybe it's a week or two weeks of a time period, you look back and see where was I spending my time? How much time did I spend in this activity? And how much time did I spend in you know, other activities? Where should I be spending my time? And if all of the time that you've spent in those other activities are enough to outsource, that gives you your answer there to find out how much time am I spending and does that equal out to being a full-time role for someone else? Because you know it could be part of my role and maybe my assistant who's also doing some of these roles, or maybe I have another employee that's also taking on some of these that can combine into one full-time role. Or if I see that it's just little things here and there, it might just be projects that I say, hey, I'm gonna pay you a set rate or a retainer to create this much output for this project every month. You know, I know what it was like at the beginning of my career where I knew I needed to outsource, I knew I needed to bring on more team members, but the risk of hiring someone full-time was a little scary because you know my revenue fluctuated. Instead, I hired freelancers or part-time employees based on the project, so I knew exactly what I was paying them, knowing exactly the revenue that I was bringing in. That felt a little bit safer until I got to the place where I knew it would definitely be beneficial to bring them on full-time. Regardless, you wanna make sure that you follow the same screening process. If you skip any of those steps, you may find yourself in a position where they don't turn out to be the right candidate and you could have easily found that and not have to go through this revolving door if you just go through the full screening process, have them do the test assignments, have them meet with other people and put them through the whole process. If you wanna learn more about creating content that turns into cash flow, whether you're a social media manager or hiring a social media manager, these are gonna be really valuable skills for you to know how to create content that's gonna give you an ROI. I want you to click the link below. I have a free training that you can get absolutely for free execute it today and bring you some cash flow tomorrow. Click link below, get that for free today. I'll see you in the next video.